With a goal to beam high-speed internet from space down to the most remote parts of the world, SpaceX's Starlink may seem like an extraordinary satellite internet provider with a basic but noble goal. But to those knowing SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk and his need for the grandiose, then you know there's much more potential than what has so far been mentioned. While Starlink, SpaceX's privatized satellite constellation, currently operates in a beta state, serving internet wirelessly to 17 countries across the globe, there's so much more that Starlink can accomplish. After all, with tests of GPS navigation and high-speed internet, alongside rumors of global cellular services, communication abilities, environmental data collection, interconnectivity, and so much more, Starlink has quite a bit of potential grandiose left to be squeezed. Plus, there's always the past to replace and the future to discover. So here's how Starlink can go way beyond satellite internet. Now, we're going to start with the latest confirmed ability, which is GPS navigation. While you all likely know what GPS is, there's a bit more beneath the surface than what most understand. Now operated by the U.S. Space Force, the Global Positioning System is a satellite system owned by the U.S. government. This mammoth $12 billion collection of 31 operating satellites has an operating cost of $750 million to provide precise location and time data. Thanks to just how ubiquitous GPS is with geolocation, they've pretty much held a monopoly in global use. That's due in part to an increase in global accuracy from 5 meters to just 30 centimeters. Nevertheless, the U.S. government owns and operates it, letting the rest of the world use it. So while there's been a back and forth in technical prowess alongside competing programs over the years, GPS continues to pull ahead. Well, that might come to an end this decade, or potentially even within a few years. In a study named Exploiting Starlink Signals for Navigation, ironically funded by the United States government, a group of research students revealed that they used Starlink to measure their location accurately. While that doesn't necessarily sound too impressive up front, it's important to realize that they had accurate geolocation results from signals they'd eavesdropped on. Three research students managed to get an accurate location within 7.7 .7 meters using just six satellites, their locations, and their movements. Just think about that. Zero access to SpaceX servers, Starlink satellites, the data traveling between them, or any connections to the satellites. Using less than 0.4% of the active satellites in orbit, they managed to get geolocation results without any data. Even though Starlink wasn't designed for navigational purposes, students without access to actual data worked to receive accurate results on a GPS request. This study is an excellent sign for the future of Starlink. Even if it involves students tapping into private signals, which might be a security issue. But remember, although the group eavesdropped on signals, used less than 0.4% of the active satellites, and these satellites aren't designed for navigation, they've managed to pull something off that's already quite impressive. Even more importantly, Starlink belongs to SpaceX. That means no bureaucratic red tape, public signals, and government control. SpaceX is a private corporation which can keep its movements confidential, stop most attacks and spoofs on GPS, and the satellites lie in low Earth orbit. So, sure, we can use Starlink satellites for GPS. So what? Alongside GPS, we have the precise location Starlink can give and a new potential use for smartphones. While it's not a likely possibility for quite a few years, Starlink has the potential to provide global encrypted satellite communication on the phone. Now, hear us out. This already exists. GPS already works similarly, and private entities like Iridium and Globalstar operate their satellite constellations. GPS is global but doesn't offer much in the form of communication or data transfer. Globalstar and Iridium do, but Globalstar has limited coverage in mid-Africa, Upper Russia, and Greenland. Some maps even show it missing in large parts of the Americas, Asia, and Europe. Iridium is a bit better considering it's the only network to offer services over 100% of the planet. However, that also means these satellites can fall out of usable range within a few minutes. On the other hand, Starlink suits itself to provide accurate location tracking, high-speed data transfer, and near-global range. We've already seen how the Constellation can cover location tracking, especially considering the study used less than a percent of a percent of future active satellites. As for high-speed data transfer and global range, Starlink already has the global range covered, obviously. With plans to have tens of thousands of satellites in the air, it won't be too hard to have a satellite overhead at every moment of the day. 
The tricky part would be the data transfer or cellular service. Currently, Starlink offers internet through small satellite dishes. While those aren't necessarily portable, you can still take them with you for an unlimited range of satellite internet. However, what if I told you that a similar idea has existed for years and can fit in your pocket? It's true. Iridium launched the first handheld satellite phone before the turn of the millennia over 22 years ago. The thing is, Starlink can't entirely launch a handheld satellite phone yet. The issue lies with the company's receiving technology requiring a satellite, which, while smaller than most contemporaries, is still a bit larger than a phone. However, with some decent work, Starship dishes can eventually compress into the form of a chip or satellite antenna to be used within a phone. Who knows if it's in a format similar to the current Garmin InReach series or Iridium's line. All we know is that with Starlink looking forward to tens of thousands of satellites, having the ability to connect on the go would be great for anyone on the planet. If SpaceX can manage to cut the $1,000 plus price tag of current quality satellite phones in a manner close to Garmin's $350 satellite phones, then they'd open up possibilities quite a bit. Suddenly, everyone would have access to cheap satellite connections, which could provide accurate navigation and geolocation, high speed or at least accessible speed data connections, and send messages or content around the globe, all without significant changes to the current Starlink plans. But of course, that's not necessarily what SpaceX has in mind. After all, current plans are to unite the world's rural areas with affordable and accessible satellite internet. So we shouldn't expect these extremes, even if it's Elon Musk. However, this is not an easier said than done situation. SpaceX already has plans to release tens of thousands of satellites into orbit. You won't need tens of thousands of satellites to give satellite internet to a few rural places here and there. SpaceX is providing this massive number of satellites to provide truly global service. With global service, the company can bring in many of these ideas without retrofitting or fitting any new satellites with new features. Everything we've mentioned so far is entirely within SpaceX's reach. The navigation potential is confirmed. We know that Starlink can provide accurate, in quotation marks, navigation around the world. As for data transfer, it works. Again, SpaceX has sent out thousands of little satellite dishes to thousands of beta testers. The only thing that would need to change for satellite phones and communication would be to miniaturize the dishes. These Starlink satellites can stay in space for as long as they need to for all SpaceX cares. So literally, the only changes needed would be here, on Earth, in the form of a small antenna or receptor. SpaceX already has the foundation for these services, even if they're not actively marketing them. So these have a legitimate path ahead of them, even if nobody's really mentioned them until just recently. Maybe it's a matter of how SpaceX can't break promises of a Starlink interconnected world if nothing's coming from the company. So what do you think? While this will likely be one of the most theoretical videos we've had on the channel, there's a lot that's rooted in genuine possibility. We've had no comments on anything past satellite internet from SpaceX or Musk, even if all of what we've mentioned is possible with current Starlink satellites. As such, with tens of thousands more on the way, will SpaceX realize just what they can do with Starlink? Are they secretly planning these already and just downplaying the service potential if something goes wrong? If this is really in the works, can SpaceX provide miniaturized Starlink equipment to put satellite data in the hands of millions of SpaceX fans? Starlink is one of SpaceX's most exciting creations, but somehow is also one of the most understated creations they've ever had. Considering the previously covered Starlink version 2.0 and these new ideas, there's so much potential that we haven't seen too many people talk about. So let us know what you think about this whole situation, and feel free to leave some of your ideas in the comments below. Either way, make sure to check out our Starlink version 2.0 video for some more context, and definitely don't stray away from some of our others.